as I'm sitting here about to do my nightly workout it's 39 degrees here in Florida but we have to work out in the name of Jesus it doesn't take much of a scientist it doesn't take much of a meteorologist to realize what's next the Sun is setting And as I take a look at that, and I realize of what's coming. Folks, something big is approaching. Just as the sun is setting and the moon is coming out, something big is coming. And I feel it deep within my bones that most people aren't ready. Set those intentions now. Why? Because as the song is singing, we are entering the dawn of Aquarius. And that's not all. Tonight, the two largest planets in our solar system will put on a show that has not been seen in centuries. You may not get another chance to see it in your lifetime. Mark Strassman shows you why you should go outside and look at the sky at sunset. Astronomer Christopher Dupree is about to see something hidden from Earth since Galileo first pointed his telescope at the stars. Wow, they're both in the finder. I've never seen that before. Our solar system's two biggest planets in one viewfinder. That's Jupiter down to the right, Saturn up to the left. That's awesome. All month, just after sunset, Sky watchers have captured the pair of planets slowly coming together in the southwest sky. Tonight, they'll overlap, appearing to merge into a single source of light. In Matthew 24, and I'll read from verses 6 on forward, God is comforting us about some of the things that are to come. And it says, And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. We're in 2020. A lot of the wars that you may see around you are not the same wars that used to exist. Some of the wars that we used to see of us invading Vietnam or us attacking Iraq. The wars that we see now are more technological. Cyber attacks. Many things like that such as bioweapons. But God tells us through it all, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And Phil, I believe we have uh, that surveillance video queued up again. This is right on 2nd Avenue, and this time we have backed it up prior to the explosion, because it does catch the explosion, but you can hear the repeated recordings. And guys, I'm not sure if we have that. We all want to just be quiet and listen carefully to that recording, which police, like you said, Phil, confirming now was coming from the RV. Let's roll it. And then there's the, there is the aftermath. Uh, it's just absolutely chilling. It's like, it, you know, it is like something you'd see out of a, a, a movie. And it's happened on Christmas Day in downtown Nashville. A very official sounding recording, Phil. It's hard to be comforted as we see what's happening all around us. We haven't even gotten through the first COVID-19 situation and now they're throwing a new monkey wrench in the equation. Now it's a mutant virus. Now it's mutated. And One of the main reasons for the decision to push millions more into tier four in England is the rate of new infections, with fears that this is being driven by the new variant of the virus. But this afternoon, the health secretary revealed that two cases of yet another variant have been detected in the UK. 
This one was first discovered in South Africa. Tonight, the government said it was temporarily stopping flights from there from 9 a.m. tomorrow. Our health correspondent Sophie Hutchinson reports. South Africa, where another new variant of coronavirus is causing alarm. Scientists say initial evidence suggests it's more infectious than other versions of the virus, and doctors are reporting more young people who are seriously ill. This new variant is highly concerning because it is yet more transmissible and it appears to have mutated further than the new variant that's been discovered in the UK. And this new mutant strain, according to what they're sharing, spreads faster than the other. And now they don't even know if the quote-unquote vaccine will work on it, which leads me to believe that a bigger money grab is coming. For you see, now they're going to need COVID vaccine 2.0. It's coming. And meanwhile, they share with us that we must trust the science. And they continuously tell you trust the science. Put your faith in the science, yet they don't even trust in the science themselves, for you see, you can't sue Pfizer or Moderna. You're looking at video of Sandra Lindsay, uh, an intensive care nurse receiving the first vaccination at Long Island Jewish Medical Center in New York. The U.S. began vaccinating the population against the coronavirus in December of 2020. The goal is to get the COVID vaccine to every person in the U.S. who wants one. But survey data shows that nearly 40 percent of the U.S. population doesn't want it. Widespread mistrust might have something to do with the fact that if anything goes wrong with the vaccine, the drug makers that produce them aren't responsible. This is a remarkable circumstance. It's certainly not like anything anybody's ever seen before. That means that companies like Pfizer and Moderna have total immunity against lawsuits related to injuries resulting from taking the COVID vaccines. Meanwhile, employers are legally allowed to require employees to get immunized against the virus. Requiring a vaccine is a health and safety work rule, and employers can do that. Ultimately, if we want any chance at returning to life as normal, mass vaccination is going to be critical. So how do you convince the public to take a vaccine made in record time using technology that's never before been licensed? And is anyone to blame if something goes wrong? I thought they trusted in science. If they would trust in science, then they would back up their product. Because according to them, you can't deny science. Well, they surely don't believe in their own science. For if you take that vaccine and you get wounded and you have a side effect, you cannot sue anyone. It's all on you. Pfizer gets immunity. You get persecution in the workplace. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And you know, this is interesting. So many people are already talking about this. And the big question everyone has, can employers require their employees to have the vaccine before coming back to work? And the answer to that question is, is generally speaking, going to be yes. Because employers set the terms and conditions of employment, employers are going to be able to require that their employees get the vaccination. But that word of for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It gives me comfort. It reminds me that there is a God up there that knows that these things were to pass and know that you were going to be alive in this specific generation to witness these types of leaders. Dr. Burks indicated that you couldn't do anything through Thanksgiving and she was stern on it. She said you need to stay home, period. Well, no Thanksgiving with extended family members here in Utah. That's a new recommendation from Dr. Deborah Burks, White House Coronavirus Task Force Coordinator. Brian Malay, he had another exclusive local interview with her today. Is her recommendation through Thanksgiving only, or is she talking into Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's? Well, it's beyond Thanksgiving, and wait till you hear how far beyond. Also, what the governor says about this idea. And really asking the people of Utah for the next 30 to 60 days, to really follow these guidelines, which includes not gathering outside your extended household. In my interview with her today, Dr. Burke seemed to fully grasp what a big request that is. And I know there's a lot of extended households in, the, in Utah. In the face of soaring COVID numbers, Burke's called this the moment to protect loved ones. We need to protect them now because a vaccine is coming. 
So no gatherings with extended family members is your recommendation through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, through New Year's. Until we can show that Utah is flattening the curve. And what do we see from this leader? This one of the biggest leaders in the country that has advocated for businesses shutting down, for people to stay home, for travels to be banned. She didn't obey her own regulations. While she was telling you to stay locked down, she was out there eating that turkey in different people's home. While you're over there stressing in your house without being able to see your family, she's not obeying the rules that she puts upon you. Right before Thanksgiving, health officials were warning everyone to stay home for the holidays and limit fam family gatherings to avoid spreading the virus. Now we're learning Dr. Deborah Burks traveled out of state over Thanksgiving weekend with three generations of her family from two separate households, disregarding her own advice. Well, Kane is a co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend, and he joins us live here in Studio J this morning. Happy holidays to you. Well, good, good to morning. see you. Good morning. Merry Christmas. So is this just the latest round of hip hypocrisy? Rules for thee, not for me because she traveled to her home. She said she was going there to winterize it, I believe was her explanation. But still, members outside of her own household, three generations, two different families. Stunning, isn't it? It's stunning, though, not because of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy and politicians go hand in hand. That's coffee and donuts. Yes, we should be outraged about hypocrisy, but it's all too common, whether or not it's Gavin Newsom or Eric Garcetti or the mayor of Denver or the mayor of Austin. It's just all too common. What's stunning, Sandra, is what it reveals. I think it just reveals an absolute disdain for the average common American out there that they send messages to. Americans out there right now whose businesses are being shuttered, their livelihoods are being lost, they're saying goodbye to loved ones in the hospital without even able to go into the hospital. Think of the cost the average American is paying while the rule makers, the lecturers, the elites do not abide by these rules. I think what's stunning is the absolute disdain it shows for the American people. It's a, this is tough and, and you, you've had a long list of Democratic lawmakers that have been accused of hypocrisy because so many of them laying down these really tough restrictions. But here's Dr. Burks uh, inside of the obviously the COVID team at the White House and she very clearly laid out her own advice right before Thanksgiving. I'm just wondering what are they thinking? Many months ago we were talking about the Great Reset that is coming. And as we spoke on the Great Reset that is coming, many people said that can never happen, that can never come. My brothers, my sisters, and the Lord, when Prince Charles himself is promoting a Great Reset, when the royal family speaks, you listen. And not because they're telling you wisdom, but because whatever is coming out of their mouth is pure demonic. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in some of their ads, they even tell you that you're not going to own anything, but that you'll be happy. They'll own everything. And they're telling you this, but people are so asleep that they're willing to accept it all. We have an incredible opportunity to create entirely new sustainable industries, investing in nature as the true engine of our economy. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives, but it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity, a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. Changing our current trajectory will require bold and imaginative action, together with determination and decisive leadership. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model, putting people and planet at the heart of global value creation. If there is one critical lesson we have to learn from this crisis, we need to put nature at the heart of how we operate. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. We need nothing short of a paradigm shift, one that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace. We simply cannot waste any more time. The only limit is our willingness to act.
And the time to act is now. And they do not realize that the devil has slowly but surely indoctrinated this world and numbed it to the point that they will accept anything and everything. And it is in times like these that you need to be extremely cautious. For you see the devil has his messengers and there are a lot of people that you may think that are in the church that are not part of the church or that are in the church but are Freemasons. You may look at them and you think that they're pastors but look at their hands. Take a look at their rings. Take a look at their license plates and you will be surprised at how many Masons were in congregations. Back when Obamacare was a big thing and back when Obama was trying to run I remember that and I'm going to try to play the clip on the screen right now. 70 electoral votes. Well, his clearly strongest voter group is African Americans and hundreds of preachers and other religious leaders are going to get a pep talk of sorts from members of the Congressional Black Caucus on how to combat the recent rise in voter ID laws. I'm joined now by the chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri, who is also an ordained minister. Congressman, it's good to see you. Good morning. Good to be with you. So you've got this big summit tomorrow. Essentially, what is your message to several hundred clergy members, I understand, who will be there? Yes, we'll have uh, representatives from nine denominations who actually pastor somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about uh, 10 million people. And uh, we are going to, first of all, uh, equip them with the information they need to know uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church, uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church, uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church uh, that would violate their 501c3 status with the IRS. In fact, we're going to have the IRS administrator there. We're going to have the Attorney General Eric Holder there. Uh, we're going to have the lawyers uh, organization from around the country, the ACLU, all giving ministers guidance on what they can and cannot do. About how 501c3 churches were being told what they can and cannot say. And I can assure you that you're going to see a big campaign from many congregations on this vaccine. And very few ministries and very few pastors will be able to speak against it because many of them will not be able to compromise their 501c status. It's a corporate church all across America. An example of that is creation.com, Creation Ministries International. Now, by all means, Robert Carter is a lot smarter than I am because he's a scientist. I am not. But in his recent article that published the 3rd of December, there's a lot of backlash in the comment section. And I'll put the link to the article below this video as well. Many of these congregations, many of these ministries, right, they do not understand where this is headed. See, you think that this is about a vaccine. You think that this is about a virus, but you don't realize that this is much more than that. This is about the Antichrist system being established full-fledged on earth and as you're taking a look right now many people will lose their jobs if they don't get vaccinated as I mentioned Pfizer Moderna get immunity they can sell something and you can't do anything about it if you get hurt but you still have to take it in many workplaces and people are succumbing to it. So imagine that if this is not even the mark of the beast yet, because this is not the mark of the beast, but this is a prelude to what's coming. And with the COVID-19 vaccine, you'll need a card to take with you wherever you go to travel. You'll need a card with you wherever you go to conduct business in certain countries. This is a prelude of what's coming with the mark of the beast, except when with the mark of the beast is going to be a digital system where all your information, you won't need to carry a public card. You won't need to carry a driver's license. You won't need to carry a social security card, which the social security number alone lets you know that you're a tracked product in this, to these nations. People do not realize what is happening before. And I pray that today more than, that today more than ever, you examine your walk with Jesus Christ. You examine the ministries that you take part of. You examine your walk. 
and that you renounce the spirit of fear upon your life because they prey upon fear and they prey upon intimidation. You know, God warned us of moments like these that were to come so that we would be prepared and understand that if we have faith in God, we have nothing to fear. Did Noah have anything to fear when these moments of wrath came upon the earth? No, he did not. He was prepared. Did Moses have to fear when he was on that Red Sea moment? No, because he was prepared. If you stand upon the word of God, God will provide and God will be with you. In our last video, and I encourage you to watch it, we spoke on Pharmakia, Revelation 18.23, the sorceries that they're using today in their food systems, in their water supplies, in everything. But through it all, as you find out that we're coming upon pestilences, that we're coming upon bioweaponry, that we're coming upon technology. I mean, think about the COVID vaccine. They're calling it a new technology. MRNA, a new technology. The one thing that I see common in the scriptures is that these nations, these sorceries, these manipulations, these world powers are going to fall. In Revelation 18, 23, it tells you, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Their, their time is ticking. Satan knows his time is short. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The scripture is filled with warnings, and it's hard to live through them, and it's hard to see the things that are happening all around us. But as they're happening, remember, we overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Remember, Babylon is going to fall. Remember, their sorceries will not overcome. And remember, God is undefeated. He is undefeated. And he wins. In fact, he has already won. We're just witnessing play out right in front of our very eyes today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if there's someone watching this video from anywhere around the world that is struggling with depression, Lord, if there's anyone watching this, Lord, that's going through the spirit of heaviness that they feel as if they can't sleep sometimes at nighttime, they worry about things that they just can't control, but they still worry about these things. A lot of intrusive thoughts, Lord, that come upon their mindset, Lord, that has them thinking about what ifs. And then after they think about that what if, they think about a what if of the what if. And it just torments them every single day. In the name of Jesus Christ, remind us, God, that you are God. And that you have everything under control. You have everything under control. No temptation has overtaken us except that which is common to man, but with the temptation he will provide a way out and that goes with anything in your life. If you're going through anxieties, if you're going through depressions, if you're going through doubts, if you're going through addictions in the name of Jesus Christ, turn that over to God right now because for God nothing is impossible. For them that believe. I believe in the name of Jesus you believe that today in the name of jesus amen thanks for tuning in family thanks for taking the time um, bookmark the website because you never know how youtube works share these videos with a friend and their family member i really would appreciate that thank you for the ministry support it goes a long way may god bless you guys for that and have a blessed blessed week thank you